Hey guys, Richard Oldner here. I'm at West Tech Performance. We have our 5.3 up on the dyno and we're going to answer the following question. You've got a Trailblazer SS. It's set up for a 90 millimeter throttle body, but like on a cam 5.3, do you really need to run the bigger throttle body? So we'll run it first with a 90 millimeter or 92 millimeter mechanical throttle body. Then we'll put an adapter on it and put the factory truck 78 millimeter throttle body and find out what happens. Okay, guys, here's a quick rundown of our 5.3 liter test motor. It was our all aluminum L33 motor I got from the wrecking yard. We had our low buck truck camshaft in it. It came equipped with 799 heads. We did do a valve spring upgrade it so that we could run the camshafts. We ran long tube headers from the dyno that had the nice BTR valve covers on it. We had our Trailblazer SS intake manifold. And to start out with, we had our 92 millimeter fast big mouth throttle body. Obviously, all these things were tuned using a Holly HP, and like everything, we ran a Mazir electric water pump and no accessories, yada, yada, yada. Boys off. Ready to pop off? Come right back. All right, here we go. You can see, probably want that. Kind of match to that. Let's install the adapter. We got a dual adapter on there. Connect that thing down. From Trailblazer SS, basically to early truck throttle body size. ICT billet, five, six, seven, eight. Who do we appreciate? Uh, how about a gun so I can just turn these things really fast? So we'll get this baby on and then we got this for our throttle body. All right, we got the front body on using the adapter. These are eight millimeter, five sixteenths. Use a nut driver to tighten those babies up. I'm gonna have to shark a TPS. Those things always seem to disappear off the cell body. I don't know what the deal is. Try to grab a bunch whenever I'm at the wrecking yard. Man, they always go bye bye. And they've got the IAC on there. I'll just grab it off the other throttle body and put that on, hook up the Super G drive-by wire, find out what it does. Okay, see we've got a TPS on there. Hook up our IAC. TPS on there. Got Super G drive-by wire throttle body. Just gotta cap that. Ready to test. Okay guys, let's jump right in and take a look at the results of our throttle body test on our Trailblazer SS intake manifold. Remember, we're trying to answer the question, 
do I need to put the bigger 90 or 92 millimeter throttle body on, on a Trailblazer SS if I upgrade like, let's say, an early truck intake manifold that would have came come with a much smaller either drive-by wire or drive-by cable. I just call them manual throttle bodies. Would have been about the same size. But what happens if I run like, let's say, a cammed 5.3 and at that power level, I run the Trailblazer SS, which we know is a good upgrade for intake manifolds. It's probably worth 10, 12, maybe 15 horsepower, depending on what application you're putting it on. So whether you're putting on a 4.8, a 5.3 or a 6.0, Putting the intake manifold on is a good idea, but people want to know, well, do I also have to spend the money on putting the bigger throttle body on there? Because the Trailblazer SS comes with an opening that will accept something near 90 millimeters. So do I have to put the throttle body on? So according to this, we'll go ahead and take a look. Take a look and we can see and we'll zoom in on the power gains here and you can see there was a difference. So as you saw in the video, what we did was we ran a comparison. I'll stop here. Zoom in on this. You can see that there is a power difference. So you guys were waiting for the power difference. It We made 433.8 horsepower with our 92 millimeter fast at 415.8 foot pounds of torque. When we, when we swapped over to the smaller stock truck throttle body, the early truck throttle body with the ICT billet adapter, run in that configuration it made 426.5 horsepower and 411.4 and you can see and the reason that i zoomed in right here is you can see there's really no difference in power down low this is very indicative of what happens when we change to a bigger throttle opening because basically that's what happened here is in this case we restricted it down with a smaller throttle body but this is always what happens as we go out in rpm where we need more airflow, the one that offers less airflow becomes more and more restrictive. Now, a lot of guys tend to think, well, how much power will the stock throttle body support? Well, it'll support a lot. I mean, if you're blowing through the turbo on a stock throttle body, you could make more than a thousand horsepower very easily because then it's not a restriction. But when you're drawing through it, like if you were to put the stock throttle body on a big motor making lots of power or in our case even one that's making not very much power it's a little bit restrictive but if you were to put it on a combination like put the throttle body in front of a big positive displacement blower it would be it would reduce the power even more because this is all about airflow so if we were to run this same test so we're looking at six or seven horsepower and <clears throat> four or five six foot pounds of torque most of it on the top end of the range in fact we'll We'll keep scrolling back out here so you can see the rest of the curve and see what I was talking about. But we only had a little bit of a power change here. What we would expect is if we ran this on, let's say, a six liter with good heads on it, maybe you put Recport heads on it. Well, you couldn't do that because we couldn't do the Trailblazer SS. But if you put good Cathedral Port heads on it and a good camshaft where the six liter might be making 500 or even 550 horsepower and you're trying to run it with a Trailblazer SS, and the bigger throttle body, if you went and tried to run the small throttle body, the difference in power that we would see would be even greater because the smaller throttle body, relatively speaking, when we were running it on a combination that makes 100 horsepower more than this test motor, the gains offered by the bigger throttle body would only increase because the smaller throttle body would become more and more restrictive. And the interesting thing on this is we data logged all of this stuff. We ran it with a Holly HP management system and I'll show you. We ran it with that EFI system. We data logged each one of the runs because we were monitoring the KPA. Basically, we were monitoring, um, this would indicate whether we had a restriction. But interestingly enough, we only saw a drop from 96 KPA with the the 92 millimeter throttle body down to 95 kpa so we didn't see a big change in indicated from the kpa reading as as an airflow restriction i expected there to be more but we're only talking about six or seven horsepower we saw a little bit of drop in the kpa reading now for those of you who are thinking well it should be 100 richard there's a restriction no there's not it the the level of wide open throttle is not always like 100 kPa because it depends on the, the sensor and how you have it scaled and stuff. So all of our runs with the bigger throttle body, the most that we ever saw was 96 kPa. And, and when we were running the small throttle, we saw 95 kPa. So the upshot of all of this, yes, the small throttle body on a Trailblazer SS, even on just a Cam 5.3, is a little bit restrictive. 
If you put it on something that makes more power, it's even more restrictive. You can use it. Maybe it's a better way to go because it's a lot less expensive. You already have it. You just buy the ICT billet, but it is going to cost you a little bit of power. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.